Let me take this opportunity to welcome everybody to our normal virtual meeting of the Tourism Portfolio Committee. The meeting is scheduled to take place from now until 15 hours. We don't have to be here until 15 hours. The agenda was sent in advance to all of us. The minutes were sent in advance to all of us. The draft report was sent in advance to all of us. So today we are going to be dealing with those issues that are on the thing is 38. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, budget vote number 38, report. And thereafter we will, if there are issues, let's raise them. We'll go page by page. Uh, doctor, just prepare yourself to present page by page. So we'll be asking members if there's, if there's anything they want to raise on that page. It means on the last page, it means we, we adopt. So those questions that must arise for the report will arise uh, throughout the presentation by the doctor, if there are issues to be raised. And thereafter, we'll deal with the minutes. The minutes of the 4th of May, 11 May, 26 May, 27 May. And then close our meeting. Dr. Boltina, do we have apologies? Um, no, no, not now, not at this stage, Sishana. Okay, we don't have any apologies. No, not, not yet, Chair. Thank you. My opening remarks, honorable members, will only relate to two things. One, I hope that all of us are continuing with uh, being vigilant during this difficult trying times on the COVID-19, which nobody anticipated. Nobody planned on how we could respond to the pandemic. But the manner in which instantly the South African government was able to respond to the challenges of COVID-19 working with the rest of the world needs to be applauded. The manner in which the different political parties met with the president when the whole coronavirus and the lockdown started, or consultation processes, needs to be applauded by all. The manner in which society has been conscientized around awareness on basic issues of washing your hands regularly, keeping about a meter and a half to two meters distance between yourself and the next person, physical distance. And thirdly, making sure that when you're in the public, your awareness level of our people. But we must accept that it's not all areas in our country and all people who have understood the dynamics of the coronavirus and what they must do the same way. Every day when we move around, we can see people are still taking it for granted. Others take it very light. They don't do safe distance uh, keeping. They don't uh, sanitize. Others don't put on masks. Yesterday, there was something which happened in South Africa in other areas which was unprecedented and very surprising that uh, people can wake up at three to go and queue in the, in the lines uh, for procurement of alcohol. It is their right, it's okay. But we just hope that uh, the thing of other people abusing alcohol will not result in unintended consequences which will lead to a, an increase in the violence against women and children and generally violence amongst uh, citizens. We hope that people will restrain themselves and be disciplined and still respect uh, the regulations. So we are in a new era, as other people characterize it as a new normal. So we have to adjust to the new normal uh, situation. Secondly, the economy is uh, affected negatively, greatly. Yesterday, the projections were revised 
that in addition to that employment that we have, South Africa is likely to have more than 1.5 million people who are going to be losing their jobs. Other enterprises will never come back again. Other people are going to be indebted to the extent that over the next 6 to 12 months, their businesses will not be able to survive. They will not have access to the necessary capital to maintain their businesses. And as a result, their businesses will collapse and they will remain with debts because they will have tried to resuscitate their businesses by accessing loans. And if as, as business uh, returns creativity, if people do not come and whatever product you, supp you supply, they don't uh, uh, buy your products or they don't use your facilities, as far as tourism is concerned, you must continue to sustain everything. You must buy electricity, pay the staff, the salaries. You must do maintenance, upkeep. All those things that you need to do, including the additional costs of having to adjust some of your arrangements in your establishment to accommodate the new situation coming from the COVID-19, are going to force people to go into debt. So we are going to be, in my view, having two phases of where people will be losing their jobs. It is now those who are struggling, and it will be those who will access cap capital in the form of credit to try and get their businesses back into operation. And if the support from those who buy their products is not to the level that will assist them to make profits, those businesses are going to collapse. So we are in a very difficult situation as a country. We want to applaud the department for introducing the tourism relief fund. It's not enough, we all know. It will never be enough. But those who will be able to access it, we hope that we will be able to alleviate some of the financial pressures they have on their businesses. It is our wish that all of us must continue to urge the banks to be a bit flexible. My view is that uh, for the next five years, the lending institutions will have to apply extreme flexibility in as far as uh, helping entrepreneurs who are in the tourism sector and generally in the economy are concerned. Those are just my opening uh, remarks, honorable members. We have taken the apologies. We don't have apologies. We are now going to give Dr. Kuzwai an opportunity to make a presentation page by page. If there's an issue you want to raise, members, raise it on that page. Because by the time we reach the last page, we will be concluding and adopting the report. Over to you, Doctor. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Chairperson. Uh, good afternoon, honorable members and colleagues. I will be taking you members through the draft report for vote 38. Maybe in, term, in terms of the process, uh, uh, I think we will have chairperson, you, I hear you say we'll go page by page, but I'm not sure if that won't be long. We can do that, or else we can... No, it's, a, it's, a, it's okay, uh, uh, Dr. Kuzwai. I got to see all of us got the report in advance. Yes. We, and we went through the report. So present it in a manner that will be comfortable with you. And if there are matters, if members want to raise, they can raise it. That's okay. Yeah, I, I think, Chairperson, maybe what I will do... I will just cruise through the initial pages that set the background and all those preliminary issues in terms of the budget because those are kind of given issues that we have dealt with the department and SAT. And then when we come to committee observations and the recommendations, then maybe that is where we can spend more time because That's I think that is. Yeah, but I think that is where we need more inputs, if any, from members. Uh, yeah. So, 
I will I, I will be using topic numbers because I've just realized that the I'm not sure if you included uh, page numbers in the copy he sent to members because the one I have does not have page numbers. If members have the same no. issue, then I can just go uh, through topics. I'll go by topic rather than by page. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe starting from where you left off, Chairperson, in terms of the current situation uh, globally in the country and in the sector in particular, uh, the committee uh, is considering this report under very difficult uh, conditions for the industry. Uh, members would know as they, uh, as they were informed by the minister in terms of uh, the current situation in the sector. So the budget, therefore, that uh, the members are considering for adoption today, uh, I will say is twofold because they are salient, they are obvious and salient issues. Firstly, you'll have uh, the ENE, -E, the estimates of national expenditure that uh, was tabled by the Minister of Finance, which then uh, gave us the amount of the money in terms of the national fiscals for vote 38. But since then, there has been some a downward revision, though that has not been tabled yet. The Minister of Finance will be tabling that uh, adjustment budget later this month. So as we are considering this budget, uh, members uh, should take in mind that the, the budget that we are approving there has been some adjustment. You will see that clearly with the SAT, because SAT tried to give members uh, those adjustments already. But we, we were just considering this budget as per ENE. -E. So where the department has revised down uh, the targets, that is not reflected in budget. You, you will see that in, in terms of the initial a strategic plan and APP that was tabled. There are programs, quite a number of them, across all uh, four programs of the department. There are many projects that have been taken off, but that is not reflected in the budget as yet. So that will become clear when the Minister of Finance tables the, <clears throat> the new budget. So I'll I will just uh, take members maybe to to topic number four. We are talking about legislative and policy mandate. Uh, that uh, the, the sector is, is, is governed by a number of policies and legislation members. And we know the Act uh, number three of 2014. That is the one that is governing the mandate of both the department and SAT. And then we have uh, the, the white paper that is also under review as the minister informed members. You also have the new growth path that sets targets for the sector. You have the national tourism sector strategy, which is kind of a blueprint currently of the sector. Then we have the, the medium term strategic framework in terms of the, the new priorities for the sector. Uh, of all the policies and priorities that have been put by government for, for this uh, MTSF, the sector is pursuing three of them. That will be in table one, honorable members, which will be page seven. Uh, priority one is building a capable and ethical development state, uh, economic transformation and job creation, a better Africa and a better world. So the the budget addresses those uh, three government priorities. Uh, now I'd I'll, I'll like to take members to, to page 11, which now deals with the, the, the budget allocation itself. Uh, the, the budget is 2.48 billion, but it, it rises to 2.68 in 22-23. So that is in the MTEF period. So it will rise from 2.48 to 2.68. Uh, 
And then we did a breakdown in terms of all the programs as to how much uh, will be spent per program. But notably is that program two still consumes more of our budget because in the MTEF, we're not just looking for, uh, 2021, 2020-21, over the next five years, uh, Program 2 uh, will be allocated about 56.3% of the total budget, uh, most of which is allocated to SAT for, for marketing purposes. Hence, more uh, or close scrutiny needs to be paid also on the NTT because they still consume a huge chunk of the departmental budget. Uh, I will take members now to page 18, which is table 3, where now it, it, it breaks down the budget according to those four programs, and you can then see that in the in 2021, uh, most of but as we have indicated, will go to SAT. But then there have been some adjustments because already even before the budget adjustments that are happening because of uh, the pandemic, already uh, there were uh, reductions in the budget that was allocated to SAT and. You members will also recall that that is also compounded by the fact that with the pandemic, SAT has lost most of other revenue streams that we normally get, for example, from the TOMSA levies, from the grading fees, and also from INDAVA and Meetings Africa. So the budget of the NDT is constrained, but it's not going to be a problem for this current year, 2020-2021, because you will see that the NDT has returned um, more than $8 million to National Treasury due to uh, some of their programs being put in place, particularly your marketing uh, and activation uh, programs. Uh, I, I will then... As I said, members, I won't be going through every program, but you will see in the report that we highlighted all those projects that have been taken out. That is uh, for members to, to see which ones are remaining in each program and which ones have been. So we included all those that have been taken out, and we also included those that have been added. For example, if you look at Program 2, they had to include uh, programs that uh, relate to tracking the impact of the pandemic to the sector, like uh, there, are, there are two reports that were not in the initial table uh, strat plan and APP that deal with tracking the impact of COVID-19 uh, to the sector. So we have included both those that are new and those which were taken out. So I think that will take care of the, 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 the initial or preliminary page in terms of the part. I'm saying that because those are the issues, Chairperson, that have been dealt with by the board committees thoroughly with the department and SAT. So I will now just go straight to uh, the committee observations, which in my document uh, begin on page 26, but is now num number nine. Uh, that is number nine in terms of the topics in the document. Uh, the observations is a mixed bag of observations uh, because some of the issues will be cross-cutting between SAT and the department. So the report does not therefore uh, separate the, the mandate of SAT and the department in terms of the observations. 
but it tries to distinguish so that it is clear for the minister in terms of the responses to the committee. In the recommendations, there are those that are specific to the entity and those that are specific to the department. But in terms of the the observations, it's it's a mixed bag. It's for both uh, uh, organizations. So I'll try and and be quick of the department and the budget allocated. It is still less to achieve uh, the huge mandate that has been given to SAT and the department. Therefore, uh, it's, it's, a it's a continuous lobbying that the committee needs to do with both the Minister and the uh, Minister of Finance and Minister of uh, Tourism. Because including, if you look at the new approach uh, for yourselves in terms of focusing on villages, townships, uh, small towns and and, and dorpies. This budget cannot achieve much, so it's it's it's, it's more of lobby work that the committee needs to do to get. We understand the fiscal constraints, but let's say there is less that needs to be done, and there is more that needs to be done with less uh, of the budget. Then nine point two. It just highlights the legislative and policy reviews that will be taken to say the committee noted that there will be the Tourism Amendment Act that is coming, but then the issue is raised in terms of the timelines to say there needs to be timelines. The, the minister raised the issue of waiting for the white paper before she can table uh, the act. But nonetheless, the issue of the timelines remains the fact. Then there is issue of college assurance that has to do with grading policy and a lot was discussed around that. Uh, I think the committee is in agreement that there needs to be policy, a policy shift uh, towards uh, compulsory but free grading. And the minister, minister did engage the committee on that one. And also the issue of uh, reviewing the white paper. And, yeah, but, sir. It looks like some members were expecting some slides. Slides. Now we will open your presentation to be through through slides. So I think just for record purpose, we must indicate that uh, we didn't prepare the slides. No, no. We send the report to members so that members can familiarize themselves with the report and then when you go through, we can go through uh, the report with you because we've got the copies. I just thought I need to, to state and restate that that fact. Yeah. Yeah, so you can proceed. There's no, there's no problem. Uh, th thank you, Chairperson. We we didn't prepare the slides, honourable members, because as the Chairperson, we assumed that the report uh, will take care of issue because. In a way, it's your report members. Ours was just to solicit uh, inputs from members. So we we were trying to assist the process. So it's, we were thinking that maybe where then members feel the report needs to be strengthened, you, 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 you will point us to those things. It's not necessarily, it, it's, a, it's, it, it's a committee report. <laughs> It's, it, it's, it's your report, so we, all, all we are... Uh, yeah, just proceed, Doctor. Yeah. yeah. So, I, 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 I was then on policy reviews, which is on page 28 of the report, the issues of access, to say, in terms of the visas, there was a discussion about uh, improving the visa system, and also the e-gates that are, are to be uh, introduced at the points of entry, particularly at international arrivals at airports. So all those issues are have to do with ease of access. Then 9.3, it has to do with organizational stability, where the committee noted that the DG has been uh, reappointed for further five years, 
And then also the chief executive officer has been reinstated, which then brings organizers stability to both the department and SAT. But also in terms of compensation of employees, when you look at the HR issues, the budget is decreasing and both entities have then to ensure that they still fulfill their mandate with the staff that they have. 9.4 is corporate governance. This has to do with mainly with the audit findings from the previous audit period to say uh, the, the AG has indicated issues in, depend or in, 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 in relation to uh, financial management, internal controls, but the committee will recall that there has been some action in that regard and some cases have even served before courts, but the, the, both the entity and the department still needs to demonstrate to the committee that those, those issues are being attended to. And 9.5 is alignment with the committee approach on uh, villages, townships, small towns and dorpies to say as much as the, the tabled uh, documents to an extent address the committee's approach by the committee still feels that more still needs to be done to align that committee approach to the work of the department. Uh, on page 8, which is 9.6, intersectoral collaboration, uh, it's, a, it's a committee approach also to say uh, the department needs to be, uh, to work more with other entities within government, uh, across the spheres of government and with the private sector. And also in terms of intersectoral cooperation is the issue of the department still continuing to struggle with implementing projects with other stakeholders that still needs to be addressed by the, the institution. There is an issue under 9.7 of the reindustrialization of the economy and the digitalization of the sector. To say as much as we are moving towards a digitalization, the members raised the issue of technology, not uh, taking jobs, physical jobs for the current employees. And the committee was assured by the entity that more work is being done in that regard and is not only in terms of uh, the digitizing the business processes of the organization. But it, is, it has also to do more with marketing activities where they want even to align all their international activities with the head office so that they can use technology to maximize marketing. 9.8 is development and promotion of domestic tourism, where committee says with uh, the advent of the corona pandemic, more focus now needs to be on domestic tourism and the committee appreciated the work done, but more still needs to be done as domestic tourism needs to be uh, the future of the country instead of the shift from international to domestic. And, and the committee also raised the issue of, say, of opening up African markets and uh, SATEC uh, markets. Then issue of, of transformation 9.9 .9 also was raised uh, by a number of members to say that there is slow transformation in the sector, more work still needs to be done, particularly on, on ownership and also on, on ensuring that there is more work that is done on the VTSDs in terms of transformation. Then there is the issue in terms of the commitments, the State of the Nation address commitments, where there were a number of pronouncements like uh, the president uh, said uh, there will be 30 officers that will be deployed by SAPs to tourist destinations. But if you look at both the department and SAPs threat plans, you don't see the budget that talks to those. So it's a matter of the committee having to talk maybe to both departments to ensure that there, there is budget. Yes, the department is implementing the safety monitors which is put in abeyance for 2021, but moving forward, there needs to be structured focus in terms of how we, we bring effect to 
to safety initiatives uh, in, in terms of aligning subs and the departmental initiatives. Also, there was an issue later that was raised by the Minister of Finance in terms of TOMSA, uh, and it was also alluded by the entity that you have lesser numbers of TOMSA levy collectors than they would want. So it's a matter that still needs to be uh, followed up. And also how then TOMSA levy is formalized so that you have more uh, country, uh, businesses contributing to TOMSA levy. Then there is an issue also 9.11 of the, the Working for Tourism program, particularly your infrastructure projects to say that is where transformation can be effected easily if you were to implement uh, most of these community-based tourism enterprises in villages and in townships. But the department said no at the moment, that is at a back banner, they are not concentrating on them. But the committee will know that there is the issue of the GTEC process, which the minister uh, undertook to the committee, that there will be a formal submission made to the committee in terms of where they are. So that is an issue that the committee still needs to follow up with the department in terms of those uh, infrastructure projects. Then 9.12 on page 34 is an issue of alignment of the district development model with the departmental programs. There is some alignment members. You'll recall that the department said they will be implementing as a pilot in three or oh, Tambo, Waterpeg District, and Etiwini. But the committee felt that no, this needs to be extended to more districts and also ensure that it follows the VTSD model. So it's work that the committee needs to follow up seriously with the department. Uh, 913 is the issue of, it's just a name change there, which still needs to be workshop with the committee in terms of how it's going to affect uh, jobs that are created through EPW because the, the name was changed from full-time equivalent jobs which is an EPWP terminology to work opportunity. So it's to see then how work opportunities will unfold and how will that improve, for example, absorption of people trained through EPWP to the tourism sector. 914 is the impact of the coronavirus on the tourism sector. Uh, I think a lot has been said about that, Chairperson, but... Uh, if we look at what you said, Church, as your opening remarks, more businesses are impacted, uh, more jobs are going to be lost, and there are going to be few uh, international arrivals, and that is going to affect also the revenue from tourism into the GDP, and also there is an issue of the risk adjusted strategy in terms of opening the sector. Whereas of yesterday, the 1st of June, most sectors opened, uh, whereas tourism is only some aspects of the industry as, aligned, uh, as outlined by the minister. So it's, it's, a, it's also work that needs to be followed very closely in terms of when will the sector uh, fully open. Then on 9.15, uh, is the issue, it is linked to, uh, to the corona uh, pandemic, is the issue of the tourism relief fund. Uh, members will recall that 200 million was set aside, kept at 50,000 for, for tourism businesses, but then there were delays as the minister was taken to court by Afriforum and Solidarity, and the minister did uh, inform members that uh, the, the board cases have since uh, been won by the department and they have started to roll out. But what the committee was saying is that even with that roll out, uh, 200 million seems to be too little for the sector that is so much affected. So more needs to be uh, given to the tourism sector, given that it is still closed while other industries. I, I think more impact still going to be in case. So it's a matter of looking for more funding for the tourism sector there. The issue of upfront payments 
uh, is just to indicate that uh, the entity is uh, paying their service providers upfront. In addition to that, they have included now the multi-year projects in the current financial year, and that also needs to be monitored very closely because it means uh, they will be paying for services that have not been delivered yet. It is acceptable given the issue of current exposure because also with upfront payments, they got approval from the National Treasury, but it's for the committee to monitor this closely to say uh, how much has been given to whom and what is the uh, return on investment on that budget. Uh, there is also an issue of the, reco the tourism recovery plan that was initially suggested by the committee. You will recall, Chairperson, in the meeting, I think of the 17th of March in Parliament, and the NTT quickly uh, worked on it together with the stakeholders. There have been webinars, and they are on it, Chairperson. It's just a matter of uh, the plan being then after it has been finalized, workshop with the committee so that the committee can know what will happen. So it has various scenarios in terms of what will happen if the industry, for example, opens earlier, what will happen if it opens late, and so on and so on. And then there is an issue of the link to that is the proposed tourism industry standards uh, that has assisted even uh, to move to level three. You will recall, Chairperson, the minister did inform the committee that there were this, and the, and the president was working with the private sector on the, that one. So some work has been done. It has assisted in opening some aspects, but uh, you still don't have international movement and so on. Even domestic tourism is limited to business tourism. So there's a lot that needs to be done. Moving further to 9.19, is the, the rethinking of the tourism strategy to say, with the pandemic, uh, we need to focus more on domestic tourism. We need to move more towards technology because tourism will not be the same after. Even the way, for example, bookings are done, maybe there will be lesser people going through uh, tourism information offices. For them, we have to we have more of your online bookings and so a lot is going to change and then the industry needs to gear itself up for those uh, pending changes. Then there is an issue of creating demand versus market driven uh, marketing. So what normally happens is that SAT will do their marketing investment framework, they look at where you have potential demand and so on. It has not been linked to tourism development per se. With the v, uh, VTSD model, th there needs to be a move towards creating demand. Because, for example, if home stays have not been featured more in terms of marketing, it means you need now to focus more on those homestay so that you create demand for them other than marketing the products that are already out there. So it's going to be a mix of ensuring that you still promote what is there, you don't lose market share, but you also go to those areas that, that have not been in the spotlight before and create demand for them. It is in the, It was not in the first strategy that they uh, submitted, but in the revised strategy, chairperson and members, it is now there, the issue of looking. So it's just for members to, to follow that up to say, how are they creating the demand? Then the commercialization 9.2 for the commercialization of SA tourism services. That is a matter that still needs to be unpacked further, and the committee needs to look at what are the implications for that in terms of the budget, in terms of business processes, and so on. That goes in hand with the digital operating model, which will see both uh, the, the, the operations and the, of the organization together with marketing being digitized. They were talking about uh, 
the five R's, Chairperson, if you recall, where they are saying uh, they want to put right, uh, right people in right place who will be doing right things with the right processes and the right technology. So it's, it's a matter of the committee uh, following that up to see how that unfolds. Then there is a matter under 9.26 of outsourcing of services. So it's, it's not a bad thing as such because of the nature of the business they are doing. They will still need to sign those joint marketing agreements. They will still have to have people in the market. They will still have to have those international offices. Meaning SAT cannot completely get rid of outsourcing but the committee had instructed as early as last year chairperson if you recall the committee had said to them they must look at ways of making sure that that work which can be done in-house uh, is done so what was said is that currently only 14 percent of the budget goes to outsource outsource services so the committee would like to say that, to see that decreasing and therefore, there will be oversight over how that 14% of the SAT budget is reduced in terms of outsourced services. So that takes care of the recommendations across all the issues that were raised, Chairperson. Now, in terms of the recommendations now on page 41, which is, uh, which is under number 10, uh, it talks to... Uh, all these uh, observations, but it fleshes it fleshes out uh, salient is issues in, so, so that there are these things as little as they are that needs to be done by both SAT and the department in term, in, 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 in in a way that they give effect to the observations so that those observations are addressed. One is that the minister needs to ex expedite the legislative and policy review process. That deals with both legislation, what paper, which will take care of other policies, such as grading and so on. And also within the white paper itself uh, is to look at uh, how then the, the, the delivery environment, the sharing economy, all those issues are taken because when it was adopted in 96, the issue of sharing economy was not that much. So 10.3 is collaboration uh, between uh, the department and the private sector when they do those uh, COVID-19 impact reports. We thought the committee needs to follow that process, so there needs to be a recommendation because those reports will tell you'll remember there, there were specific questions that were asked by the committee and the department always said no they don't have information as yet for example there were uh, questions around how many people currently have been affected by covid 19 how many people that are not how many industries that are not bee compliant that have uh, lost jobs and how how are those jobs compensated? so there are many issues in terms of those uh, impacts. <laughs> well, I said you must, you must, you must do it. Power, please, can you take care of the child? Then? Well, don't I always tell you to look, not close the gate before you watch. You did bump the car, go check. Take care of the child, please. Can you mute? People must mute. Uh, I, I think it's it's honourable uh, April uh, Chaperson. Maybe can you direct it to him? Oh, honourable April. Honourable April. The administrator, if you can. Help us with, uh, okay, I'll send you a message. Proceed, doctor. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, uh, I was on 10.3 honorable members where we say there needs to be collaboration between the department and the private set in terms of development of those, because there needs to be a lot of research. 
that needs to be done in terms of ensuring that we get a feel of how the industry is impacted. It's going to be very important for the committee to follow uh, those impact reports, Chairperson. And also, 1024, it looks at the alignment of departmental work with the priorities of government. Yes, we, can, we see those three priorities that the department is pursuing, but it's going to be a constant work that needs to be done. By the, so the minister needs to, uh, to show how there has been, because members kept on saying, but we don't see alignment here, we don't see alignment there. Much work has been done, but then the department needs to ensure that it demonstrates to the committee how this is, particularly, for example, if you look at the district development, they need to be specific to say, in this particular district, this is what we are doing in that particular district. That is what we are doing. So it is, it is a recommendation that looks at alignment, particularly in terms of the district development model. So the recommendation is for the minister to lobby cabinet for more uh, relief funding for the tourism sector. Then 10.6 uh, looks at the issue of the visa regime, the entire visa regime. Uh, a lot of work has been done there, but members uh, still feel more work needs to be done. So uh, the, the that recommendation deals specifically with the ease of access and ensuring that the visa regime uh, becomes tourist friendly. Then 10.7, uh, it, it deals with partnerships now to say there needs to be a comprehensive plan that deals with partnerships between department, SAT, private set, and provincial departments in terms of destination marketing. Because <laughs> there, there is a lot of budget that is, you know, this is a matter that the committee has always been raised to say, how much really is needed to market tourism in South Africa? And it has not been quantified because what the committee does is mainly to follow money that is appropriated to the Department of Tourism and SAT. But we have a lot of uh, money in terms of funds appropriated by provinces and municipalities, particularly to marketing in South Africa. And how do we coordinate uh, in terms of the VST, VTSD model, that is going to be very important to know. To so say, if, for example, the committee goes to uh, Limpopo, so you, have, you, you must know how much is available at a provincial level and all the municipalities, and how is that money being effectively uh, utilized to ensure marketing. Then, 10.8. Uh, is, is in terms of formalized partnerships. You recall, Chairperson, as a committee, you adopted what the committee does, this calls the spokes of the bicycle, to say you have many departments that are collaborating, that have an extended mandate for uh, tourism. And you recall the department came to present their stakeholder engagement matrix to the department. But the committee still felt that that does not see, show how these have been formalized. So you need to formal, there needs to be formalized uh, arrangements in terms of institutionalizing those stakeholder engagement. So there is, therefore, a recommendation towards formalizing the institutional arrangements between the department across government, and also with the private sector. Then, 10.9 deals with now the initiatives that promote domestic tourism so that we do not rely on international tourism in case uh, the situation that is unfolding now happens again. Then, also, 10.10 .10 deals now with funding for infrastructure projects to see maybe more budget for working for tourism needs to be channeled towards infrastructure projects. But then before that happens, the committee needs to have their, those engagements with the minister in terms of how you get rid of all the challenges in the implementation of the infrastructure projects. But that is one easy 
a mechanism of ensuring that we have tourism development in the villages and township so that uh, the sixth parliament uh, committee can be able to uh, ensure that there is that transformation in villages. Then point 11 uh, has to do with a transformation fund, a equity fund and incentive program to say the criteria for those funding. Some of this funding for, for 2021 have been put on hold, but we are looking at the MTEF period to say that there must be more towards your previously disadvantaged communities. Then point 12 will develop uh, for safety and security for tourists. Uh, when their strategy is presented to yourselves, then you need to ensure that the safety monitors are, are integrated with the, the SAPS so that you stretch uh, the budget in terms of ensuring safety and security for tourists. Then there is a, a proposal for, for the review of the rural tourism strategy and the heritage tourism, so, so that it has tangible implementation programs in terms of uh, rural tourism. Uh, 10.14 uh, now is, is a recommendation that deals with engaging private sector uh, to ensure that the there's a facilitation of domestic. There are many things that needs to be done or that could be done. Recall the committee, for, for example, previously uh, advanced the notion of a dual pricing or you can have reduction of prices uh, or you can have a packaging that is geared towards a, your lower income groups and so on and so on. But that needs to make business sense for the private sector. So it therefore needs engagement to ensure that there is a refocus. But what the CEO said for the end it is encouraging because members recall the, the CEO said already within the private sector, uh, there is now a realization that tori domestic tourism is the future. So we think those engagements will be easy to to do, Chairperson. 10.15, now it, it has to do with a equitable tourism development and promotion in the VTSD. So more focus should shift from what is called the Golden Triangle, Devon, uh, Johannesburg, and Cape Town. And there should be more focus on uh, the villages, townships, uh, small towns, and Dorothy. So it's a recommendation that uh, is meant to boost domestic tourism in that regard. And also, uh, the last one in terms of the recommendations to the department is to do with transformation to say the programs you the, the, the members kept on saying uh, you, you 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 don't see transformation there are transformation programs they are scattered all over the four programs but what is lacking is the comprehensive plan from the B charter council that is gonna now look at what the department is doing and what the Charter Council is doing so that you have a comprehensive plan for transformation. So if we don't have that comprehensive plan, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a challenge for members to see which are the transformation programs by the department. So the, the, you, you need to push, therefore, uh, for transformation plan from the BE Charter Council. Now let us look at the recommendations in relation to the NDT. So the first 1.17 there has to do with the finalization of the National Tourism Recovery Strategy. That's what the NDT calls it. You recall, as a committee, you said you want a tourism recovery plan. So the NDT calls it the NTRS, National Tourism Recovery Strategy. It is already in motion, so it's just for it to be uh, speedily concluded and presented 
to Parliament. Then 10.18 uh, deals with those collaborative partnerships we were talking about to say uh, there should be a, 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 a comprehensive collaboration and partnerships plan. So as a committee, we need to know to say the department is working with this particular entity for this. So they will then need to present that to, so that you can then conduct oversight over those partnerships. Even when you go to oversight on provinces, you know in this particular province, for example, we are working with AXA here, you are working with Sun Parks, or as it is in KZON, or with this particular Red Heritage site. All of it must be documented, and you must be able to track what is happening throughout the country in terms of that comprehensive, collaborative, and partnership. Then, in terms of uh, repositioning and repurposing of the public entities, is, is for the minister to ensure that as government concludes that process, SAT does not lose its mandate. Members will recall when you met with the with brand SA, you identified a number of issues where there were serious overlaps in terms of the mandate of SAT and brand SA. So. The, the suspicion is that there, there might be some serious reconfiguration around marketing, but the meaning is that the, the, the suggestion in terms of the recommendation is that as that process is concluded, the minister must ensure that SAT's mandate uh, is, is not jeopardized. Point 20 is that quantification now of marketing budget where we said you have a lot of budget all over, so we need to quantify the marketing budget that is available across the spheres of government. And the entity can do that because they, they, they work closely with the provincial DMOs. Two, one, uh, is that the minister should expedite the digitalization of the tourism sector to modernize marketing and maximize presence across all global markets. So this is both for the department in terms of government, but mostly for the private sector. But the process should be led by the entity to ensure that digitalization happens and also our marketing is moving more towards the digital platforms. They undertook to do that and they said they've uh, already presented a plan to the board and maybe it will be uh, adopted soon and presented to the committee. Then is a development also of a cold, a comprehensive domestic growth tourism strategy. There is a, a, a domestic growth tourism strategy, but it has to look at everything that is happening now and then incorporate uh, the committee's uh, approach in terms of oversight in villages, townships, small towns, and other Point two three is that transformation should be deliberate. So the department should need to include deliberate inclusive growth in the plans, in their plans. So there must be deliberate plans to, to say these are the transformation program by SAT. Because currently Monday they rely on the tourism incentive program in terms of grading and taking uh, the SMMEs to to market through the market access program, but, but you don't see their own initiatives in terms of transforming the sector. Uh, point two four has to do with airlines. You recall, members, you raised the issue to say after COVID nineteen, it is likely that. Uh, the cost of travel is going to increase exponentially. So it's for the, the minister through the board of SAT to, in, to start having conversation with the airline so that you do not have exorbitant increase in fees, then you lose potential tourists to the country. Then point two five uh, has to do with Collaboration now 
between the private sector and SAT in terms of marketing activity. That will extend to Tom Salevis and many other because they have what they call the collaboration fund. That they, the, the amount of money, because they don't take all the Tom Salevis to SAT, they leave some of the budget to to TPCSA through what they call, you rec you'll recall members, uh, even during uh, the drought crisis uh, in the Western Cape, they were using that collaborative fund, going abroad, communicating the message. So is to say you need more of such collaborations between government and uh, the private sector. Then also, in terms of targeting, giving uh, that the marketing investment framework, because you recall the entity said they, they had done that MIF that they presented in their first APP, but they said that is no longer uh, in place now because they don't know how will the market look like moving forward. So I think when they do their new marketing investment framework, they must target those markets that will bring both volume and value. Volume is mostly from African markets, but that volume then will, will give it. But we have international markets where you don't have numbers, but you have high spenders. So you have to target those markets as well. That you have, you, you don't have to drive numbers specifically in those uh, because you know if you bring them here, they will spend. Then that takes care of 16, uh, 26 and 27. 10.28 uh, is the issue of uh, targeting high China and India specific. And, and this time around, the committee said, no, you have to include more countries, even in Africa. It must not be Nigeria on. You have to include other African countries. So 10.27, therefore, looks at higher spending international markets that needs to be targeted. 10.28, uh, no, 10.29 uh, it, it then talks about the expansion because we're saying it needs to be specific. As much as we say you are targeting those high spending markets, but we're saying in the African market, you also need to include more. So it's a specific recommendation. It talks to the one, it talks to the one above, but we're saying so, so that we don't lose it, it is a, a standalone recommendation. 10.30 is the issue of internal controls and governance issues within SAT to say they need to take that in terms of what was identified by the AG. And also the issue of the early strategy, because currently you still have smaller towns that do not have scheduled flights, and you have uh, towns where you have only one scheduled flight, but one airline, which makes the cost very high. So you need to unlock the airlift throughout the country so that you unlock towards the potential for the smaller towns. Then point three two is the integration of technology to to destination marketing and improving. A, a tourist experience. Uh, that is more of work that SAT needs to do with the private sector. For example, if you talk to tourist guides, for example, if, if a tour operator uh, does not have a Wi-Fi, it then dampens the tourist experience because people, when they go elsewhere in the world, they'll find that uh, even the vehicles they are using, they have internal Wi-Fi and so on. So it's more of a lobby work that SAT needs to do with the private sector. Then 10.33 uh, is, is the work that needs to be done with provincial destination marketing organizations and provinces in particular to ensure that the staff that deals with marketing, they are all on the same page in the country. Because there is a knowledge gap, we find that maybe a, pro, a person in the province or at a national level knows more about tourism than a person at a local level. Because at a local level, we find that an LED officer 
will also do tourism. So there needs to be more work in terms of capacity building for provincial and in particular your local government officials. The last one, 10.34, uh, is for the incentives market to say uh, most companies, they provide incentives now for their uh, employees, but it is not mainly for domestic tourism. So it's for SAT to look at the incentives market, work right with the private sector, to see how can you unlock uh, the, the incentives. For example, companies giving their executives money to travel the country and so on and so on. So those are the recommendations and observations, honorable members. So I I I'm not then short purpose in terms of the way Thank forward. You. Yeah. Thank you very much, Doc, for the, the presentation. The salient points from the beginning and then the observations by the committee and the recommendations. Honorable Moteka struggled to come through. You are welcome, Honorable Moteka. Honorable T.S. has been struggling and she couldn't come through. Uh, it looks like there's a problem with Vodacom connection in the Eastern Cape or wherever she's located. Uh, President Gallo is the same thing. It doesn't look like he was able to come through. So once more, our apologies for that. We did bring to the attention of uh, Honorable Frolic the problems with Microsoft connected. The, with Zoom, so far, we haven't been experiencing problems. Looks like there is some challenges with, with Microsoft. So we'll continue to raise that matter. And once more, we apologize. Honorable members, we've got an uh, opportunity for now members to, to comment. Let's start with uh, Honorable Defraitas. Sorry, Chair, just trying to get to mute. Um, I've got no, I have read through it, and um, thank you very much uh, to the support staff who've put a very good document together. It's very comprehensive. I don't really have any questions, so I'm happy so far on this, on this report. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Honorable Defraitas. Honorable Kalipa. Honorable Kalipo. Okay, Honorable Gumbi. Chairperson, uh, I've gone through it and I'm also covered. Okay, thank you. Honorable Gumba. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Chair. I'm also covered by the report. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Honorable April. Okay, Honorable Setole. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Chairperson, actually, we, we must thank the, the doc for the job for the job well done. But only thing only thing that I want to, to check with the doctor and the committee, if you can put some time frame on 10.17. 10 point 18, 10.18, 10.22, 10.25, and 10.29 and 10.33, 6 Those I think we have to put some time frame so that we can monitor them according to what time frame we do have we put on on on, on, the, on our on those uh, bullets. Thank you, Chair. Okay. In addition to that, we do have some. Some, some time frames. I think uh, we have agreed with the department that September this year we are going to be publishing a report as far as transformation in the tourism sector. It's, it's an extra committee. Secondly, we said the white paper process, uh, which is also influencing the tourism bill. 
should be completed by the end of the financial year 2020-2021. So we'll add those uh, time frames as suggested, uh, honorable members. Thanks, honorable Sotole. Honorable Motika. Thank you, Chairperson. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Chair, I, th I think uh, if we can put some time frames, as Mr. Stoll have said, and also we must be, I mean, they must be very clear, man. We don't want this uh, big English that is confusing our people. When our people in the villages are asking, uh, what is the department doing for us as the villagers? We must be able to answer without going through a uh, lot of uh, complex things. So that's what I was fighting for last time, and it should be very clear. If we you know the focus now is in the villages of the Northwest or, 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 or of the Northern Cape, should be very clear. Then we, we can say, no, it is happening there in the, in the villages of uh, Daniel scale in, 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 in Northern Cape or in his, in his cocoon in, 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 in Poop. So it should, be the, it should talk the simple language of our people. That's how we, we, can, we can go. But going through complex things at the end of the day, we'll end up just fighting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable. Thank you, Honorable. Honorable Okay, Honorable Miyani. Honorable Krambok does have a, a, a challenge with signal, so he did indicate to, to us as the DA. Okay, okay. Oh. thanks, thanks. Thanks, Honorable Kumpi, for that. Honorable Miyani. Okay, Honorable Makubela, you are the last. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, perhaps, uh, Chairperson, am I audible? Very uh, audible, very audible. Okay, thank you, Chairperson. Can I direct the, uh, the, the drafters of the report uh, to 7.2.1, uh, where uh, I think it's the, the paragraph that talks to say that says uh, the department has experienced challenges re with regards to employment equity with a new ministry staff added to the establishment. Perhaps it would be is it possible that they qualify that statement so that we understand that if the department in the department in general has a problem with employment equity. Uh, because as I read uh, the, the APP, I did not uh, see that the department is having a, a problem with employment equity. Perhaps maybe that, that, that statement needs to be qualified so that we understand exactly where, is it in the senior management, is it in the middle management, or is employment equity a challenge in the overall uh, uh, entire department? And then I also want to direct uh, the drafters to point uh, number 9.3. Uh, 9.3, uh, 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 Dr. Kuzwayo and uh, Mr. Boltina. There, I think there is a, an error to say that there has been two resignations in the entity, in SAT. What is correct is that one resignation is the chief strategic officer, which is Ms. Bashni, and then the, quality, the chief quality assurer uh, uh, contract has come to an end. Uh, that's how I, I saw the, 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 the report. Perhaps maybe that should be corrected because it, here the report says there are two resignations, in the APP it, uh, of the entity, it goes to one resignation and one contract coming to an end. And then
Honorable Chairperson to 9.13. Uh, 9.13 is just a general observation that, to that talks to the work opportunities. Now, here, yeah, the manner in which this point is captured, uh, Honorable Chair, it says uh, uh, there'll be a shift in the naming of the full-time equivalent uh, jobs to work opportunities. Well, I want, what I want to find out is whether, because we, what I understood is that the department uh, uh, allocates money to the Department of uh, Public Works or the department uh, transfers money for these uh, employment opportunities. The department is not the implementing agent of these work opportunities. Uh, so I want to understand how will that, does that also affect how the other departments are, are calling these full-time equivalent jobs or these work opportunities? Because it's a bit, it's bit confusing for me uh, how the department implements these uh, projects or how the department works around this uh, uh, expanded public works uh, programs. And the last one, uh, uh, Chairperson, is 9.15. 9.15 talks to the delays in implementing the Tourism Relief Fund. And from there, I, I believe that, uh, I think, uh, Chairperson, we should just immediately after the, the heading, the delays in implementing the Tourism Relief Fund, we must then qualify that statement so that a person must not read the last paragraph only to find out that there were challenges from Afri Forum and Solidarity with, who took the department to court with regards to the triple BEE codes uh, in in the allocation of uh, tourism, uh, the tourism relief fund. Uh, it is my plea, Chairperson, through uh, the committee that perhaps after the subheading, we must be able to let the reader understand that what were the delays, uh, so that you you don't only look into the paragraph and only read the last sentence to only find out that these delays were as a result of uh, organizations taking the department to court, challenging their allocation of the tourism relief fund. After, uh, 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 Chairperson, may I also just indicate and appreciate the overall drafters of this report to say that this is a true reflection of our own report uh, of the points that are captured, and we are very much in agreement uh, with with most of the points that are captured here, and also the resol the recommendations that we are giving to both the department and the entity. Uh, I must appreciate uh, that uh, the drafters captured our discussions uh, and our deliberations in the APP uh, of the department and the and, and the entity SAT correctly. So, uh, thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Makubela. Those points are noted. I think what we will do in the report, we will indicate the specifics with regard to the performance of the department as far as directorates are concerned around issues of uh, transformation as they relate to equity. So that, that, that will be corrected. Secondly, the specifics um, which Honorable Monteka was talking about, those projects which uh, are in the district, including the specific projects mentioned by the department and SAT outside other areas which are in the district market. We will have to specify them. I'm sure that will be brought to the that will be brought to the attention of the department. Thirdly, the matter relating to the resignation and the terms ending that that will be corrected. The other thing is on the great confusion because other people may think that. Uh, 
the, the department delayed in dispersing the funds out of uh, inefficiencies within the department. The closing date was uh, yesterday, if I'm not wrong. And uh, there were consequently those developments in course which can delay some of the processes. So that will be corrected and, and clarified. We will also, in the areas where we use these villages, townships, and small villages. So it's not villages, townships, small villages, and towns, uh, uh, doctor. Because uh, Dorothy is a town. Dorothy is African. Town is, is English. So that will also be uh, corrected. Um, the, there's a matter that relates to transformation, which is in, in the observations and the recommendations. It's something which I think uh, we must make sure that we issue something. If we were in Parliament, because of not, of not Corona, we would have issued a, an advice to the people of South Africa, specifically in the tourism sector, and generally the people of South Africa, to make contributions around transformation charter, which we will then look at in September. So I'm sure the committee will agree that maybe we need to issue that, Dr. Dr. Beltino, calling on South Africans to make contributions on how they think the tourism sector is transformed in South Africa and their proposals on how they think we can accelerate uh, transformation. The, the other thing which... Uh, I think uh, it's not part of these discussions here, which we must just remember ourselves on, is that uh, June we were supposed to meet with our provincial counterparts on the uh, Legislative Tourism Oversight Forum. So what we will do, uh, I think, is to issue that notice so that we can start having meetings with them virtually, our provincial uh, counterparts. All those other issues, honorable members, that uh, have been raised to make sure that we accommodate them. The last issue from my side, which I think must just be a recommendation to the department, it's on the... They must consider going forward whether they shouldn't engage the National Empowerment Fund to manage the Tourism Relief Fund. So that instead of having external body, you would rather use what is existing within the state to do that. The other opportunity that exists, which the tourism department can, in the context of the Tourism Relief Fund to discuss with the NEF, National Empowerment Fund, is to help people in using the little they might be getting from the Tourism Relief Fund to access funding in the National Empowerment Fund. I think if they can do that and they collaborate, it will help people who are in the tourism sector, not only to be using the Tourism Relief Fund, but also using that to maximize opportunities within the National Empowerment Fund. So that collaborative effort, I think, will go a long way in helping us to help those who are in the tourism sector not to collapse because of the COVID-19, but also just to empower them so that they can be efficient and effective in their enterprises. Otherwise, the report, I think, is, is, is a great thing, and uh, we, we are adopting it uh, uh, formally. Our next item is minutes. Excuse me, Chairperson. Yes. Uh, on the issue of time frames, can we just, instead of putting time frames per, per recommendation, just in the introduction of the, the recommendations themselves, to say the minister to report to the committee on this by the end of the 2020-21 financial year? 
so that by the end of the financial, the committee will know the status of all these issues instead of because there are many others in addition to what Honorable Stolle raised that will need time frames. Maybe just have like like we did before. Just put an umbrella time frame, which is the end of the financial year. Then the department will give us their their, their responses, and then we can track from there. Yes, that's good. That's exactly the point. But remember that uh, what should also happen from the department is that on a quarterly basis, in the quarterly reports, updates must be included. So we should be saying the, the minister should, by the, the department should, by the end of the financial year, having done those things, and that uh, ongoingly through the quarterly reports, the committee will expect updates so that we don't wait for the end of the financial year but rather in between we can get updates and where we need to make some interventions we can make them so so it will be like that and Thank you. yeah honorable or oh, not honorable i'm promoting you now honorable. <laughs> We are now going through the minutes. Yes, Chair. I'm going, to, I'm going to check with the members because the minutes were, were distributed uh, to us. Whether I want to go through these minutes. Uh, yeah, let's start with the members, the minutes of the 4th of May 2020. Is there anything? To amend there. If not, can we have a mover in a second? Chairperson, uh, I, Lucizo Makubela Mashele, uh, move uh, uh, Chairperson uh, to adopt the minutes as a true reflection of what transpired in the portfolio committee. Thank you very much, Honorable Makubela. Is there any second? I, Chair, any two second. Okay, thank you, Ntatemi. Any, any objection? No objection. The next set of minutes is the minutes of the 11th of May 2020. Do you have a mover for adoption of the minutes as a true reflection of what was discussed in the meeting? I move, Chairperson. Honorable uh, Makubela any second? Uh, uh, Honorable Gomba seconds the chair. Honorable Gomba is seconding. Do we have an objection to the adoption of the minutes as a true reflection of what was discussed in the meeting of the 11th of May 2020? No objection. The third set of our minutes is 26 May 2020. Do we have a mover in the second? I am Elina Gomba, uh, adopt the minutes and uh, say that it is the correct reflection of the previous meeting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Gum Gumba. Gumba? Do, yes. Do, do we have a second? <coughs> I keep his toilet seconded. Okay, that is toilet. Thank you very much. Do we have an objection? No objection recorded. The minutes of the 26th of May will not be recorded as a true reflection of what ensued during the Tourism Portfolio Committee meeting. The last set of minutes, honorable members, is the 27th of May 2020. Move and second. We have a mover. Uh, Honorable Mak Honorable Makubena Makubena, uh, moves that the minutes of the 27th, the Wednesday, the 27th of May, are a true reflection of what transpired in, a, in the portfolio committee and our discussions are correctly captured. Do we have a second? But Sirisa Medina Gomba second, Chair. Thank you very much, Austin. Any objection, honorable members? No objection. 
The minutes of the 27th of May 2020 will now be adopted as a true reflection of what ensued in the meeting of the portfolio committee. So the minutes are, are adopted. Mr. Boltina, announcements. Yes, Chairperson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'm not sure, Chair, whether they've managed to work on my camera last time. Uh, members were not able to see me. But we can we hear still you. Can so. see oh, you now. okay, okay. We can, we can uh, okay, the, Chair. We um, we, 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 we've got, we've got, um, we, we, we've got a request in front of us, Chairperson. Uh, yes. We have received it, this request on Friday. Uh, is from Tourism Business Council of South Africa. Um, they are requesting to have a, a meeting with the Portfolio Committee. Now, I ask them exactly, specifically, what is it that they want from the committee? Then they said that they want an information sharing session, session with the committee because there is a couple of engagements that they were involved in. First, they met with the Minister of Health. Uh, secondly, they met with the Minister of Finance. Uh, thirdly, they met as well with the President. Now they are of the view that they feel that uh, the lot of work that they have done, they also want to share that uh, with the Portfolio Committee as well. So, so they are requesting that in for that that meeting chair. Then I've indicated to them because we've got a meeting today. So they are requesting we will subject it to this committee meeting so that the committee can discuss and 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 make a decision. Then we will communicate the decision to them uh, immediately after after this meeting. Um, uh, uh, Personally, from where I'm sitting, Chair, um, I, I was just going to, if the committee has agreed to that, and then I will get, get into uh, negotiations with the officer of, uh, Office of the Director General, just to check whether if we can delay their, their meeting with us on the 9th and have the meeting with the Tourism Business Council next week on Tuesday, uh, will it do a harm on their side if they are their quarterly report will just um, extend it later by a week thereafter chair that that that, oh. that is that is what that is the proposal i am making to the committee chair to consider honorable <clears throat> members i did receive a call from the chair of the of the tbcsa and I said to him that, in principle, I don't think the committee will have a problem in engaging with them to get a briefing on their meetings with the president and all and sundry consent that they have met. So I think what will be proper for us is just to look for an appropriate time date. Our venue is clear, it's still visual, and then we can have that meeting. Is there any objection to that proposal? Agreed. Chairperson, there's no objection. Uh, I believe that uh, it's, it's, it's correct leadership that you have provided to uh, the Tourism Business Council of uh, South Africa because, indeed, uh, the impact uh, of COVID in the tourism sector needs to be shared with us through the business side or we need to hear other voices besides the department on how COVID has impacted uh, the tourism sector and how they plan to assist the, the sector working with their organization because they are, they are an organization of uh, businesses within the tourism sector in the recovery, how they are going to re, uh, as, uh, uh, support the recovery plans of, the, of, of government and their own uh, businesses, how they will work with government and various stakeholders in ensuring that tourism uh, is able to stand up and it's on its feet again. Okay. Uh, members, I assume that all of us agree that at an appropriate time and date we can then meet with uh, 
TBCSA to deal with all matters uh, concerned. Just before we close, honorable members, we need to have a mover for the adoption of the report which we dealt with earlier, the committee report on the strategic plan of the department. I know it's unanimous, but in terms of records and proceedings mm -hmm. of the house, we need somebody to move and so on. Can we have a mover? Chair, okay, I move. I move for the adoption. Is it honorable Gumi? Uh, Chairperson, uh, Chairperson, are we moving for the for the for the draft report that we were be with now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the draft report to now make it a report of the committee. Yeah. Was it Sorry, Honorable Chair, who was moving? Oh, then yes. I will be seconding. It is Honorable April speaking, Chairperson. Oh, April. Yes. Thank you very much, Honorable April. Who is the seconder? Uh, Chairperson, uh, may I request that, uh, that may I second the, 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 the move for the adoption of the, the report? The draft. But uh, the draft report but include the corrections and the amendments yes. that uh, needs to be made. Yeah. The report will be adopted with uh, corrections and additions that have been the made. Is that agreed to honorable members? Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. The, just lastly, honourable members, what we'll do then as a committee, two things around uh, the decision we took on transformation culminating in September, the report. We will issue an invite for South Africans uh, working with the committee to make inputs on their experiences on transformation in the tourism sector in the Republic of South Africa, progress the things they have observed, challenges that are still there, suggestions that they think should be taking us forward. Secondly, we will, uh, the chairperson will arrange a meeting virtual with uh, the chairpersons of tourism in provinces so that we can implement that aspect of our program on uh, tourism oversight forums and then interact with them uh, because in provinces I know they are also working on adoption of budgets for the financial year starting now ending in 2021. Other than that, honorable members, I want to thank you for the robust participation in the committee. And I want to emphasize again, please let us spread the message to our people that uh, level three or level two or one that are going to come is not the end of the coronavirus, but rather it is levels that allow South Africans business governments, yes, everybody else, to return to normality, but bearing in mind the reality that the coronavirus is existing. We don't have the vaccine for the coronavirus. And many people are continuing to contract the coronavirus in South Africa. Many people are continuing to lose their lives in the Republic of South Africa. Many other people are also recovering from the virus. Because we are in the winter season, it's going to be more confusing. And according to the our situation might uh, just uh, get worse. So it's important for us to emphasize the message that says, yes, we are opening up the economy. Life must return to normality. But people have to be extraordinarily vigilant. Because if we are not extraordinarily vigilant, we are going to lose members, 
of our society, and it will be unfortunate for that to happen. So I'm just requesting that we must continue to spread uh, the message. Uh, and we must applaud everybody else who, like the churches, we have said, yes, we are opening, but we will be cautious in our approach. Other than that, honorable members, thanks once more for the productive engagements in the committee, and I wish you uh, a nice weekend until we meet again in our committee meeting. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.